My name is Matt, I'm the Viking Biker. My name's Karina, I'm Freebird Mozo. And together we're starting a series called... Coffee Shop Talks. Boom! <laughs> coffee shop talks. On my right we've got the Viking Biker, on the left we've got Freebird Moto and in the middle we've got Moto Newbrider. So let's kick it. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right, Moto New. Oh, hi. Hi. How are you? You're down south. I know, are you south? North. Where do you oh go? I'm south. Yeah. I've come north. <laughs> I've gone north. <laughs> north of the wall. <laughs> Going up north. That doesn't make sense. That does make sense. Does it? Going down south, going up north. Going up north. You're here with us. That's good. You make it. Excited. Here. <laughs> We're excited. <laughs> We're all uh, sports of sickness, mm. really, starting. So I thought we'd have a little chat about that. Yeah. Where we all came from. <laughs> but we're all new, actually. All little noobs. Three little all, noobs. The thing is, you're oh. always you're always a noob. You're always oh, learning. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Aren't you? That's the whole oh, we're getting thing. Deep, oh, straight out of the game. Oh, oh, oh. Gosh. Can we change this to whiskey? Oh, yeah. That'd be that'd be awesome. That's another oh yeah, I'd do whiskey talks. <laughs> whiskey, whiskey, talks. Talks. whiskey and fire talks. So how did you find out about sports of things? I kind of found out about them because of you. Yeah, which is quite crazy. Yeah. Which is really different. <laughs> I think for me, I found out about it. It just came up on my Facebook page because obviously Facebook stalks you with all the things <laughs> that you like, and it just popped up, and I just clicked on it, and that was it. How did you find them? Did you just go and? No, that was it. It just came up on my things you may like. Yeah. And it just popped up, and I just saw sports to sickness, and I thought, well, I've got a sports so day. That's quite obvious. Um, and that was it. Well, so was your like first? ride out with them though. Like. First ride out, I always remember that. So I think it was, I joined in, I think it was November 2015 and I think I did a ride in January and it was in my area and we went down to uh, the shores, no Sykes and there was about oh, yeah. 18 of us and it was awesome. We all rocked up outside a coffee shop <laughs> and I just remember seeing the line of bikes. And <laughs> yeah, like, oh, it's really so, yeah, it's like, like ridiculously cool. Out, yeah, God, you know? I'm so cool. Yeah. And, that, and that was it. I remember riding down and thinking, this is really cool. Yeah. And that was it. And that was my first time. But I think the things that really stand out in my mind is when you have, you know, the big ones. Mm. The yeah, annual events, up. and then that is something that's else. That's ridiculous, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's the sound, isn't it? It's like oh everyone God, in convoy. The, yeah. like everyone Amazing. in convoy. That noise that like you can't yeah. get it out. It's like it's in your head. It's just that yeah. general <laughs> rumble. It's, a, it's amazing. I've just seen all the different sportsters as well. Yeah. You know, all the different styles, and I think that's cool. Yeah. yeah. Shutting down the roads. I love that people stop at the side of the road and just like, what is coming? <laughs> what yeah. is this? And it just keeps coming. Yeah. 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 It's, it's just, crazy. And I love, like, when you, obviously you can see them, like, all in front of you. And when we came into, uh, where do we normally, where's Bite Me? Jack Hill. Oh, they yeah. brought us in on the A5 and you can see everyone snaking in front of you and then in your mirrors you can see like hundreds <laughs> behind you like yeah. oh this is so cool I just grin the entire time like oh my god that's awesome that's weird then so you kind of that was your first ride out of the sickness at Shores at that's quite the journey yeah to where you are, like, I know now. it's a bit crazy kind of two years later and how it's all evolved and what an addiction it is. Oh my god, yeah, it is. Yeah. And I think that, that's the cool part of it. Yeah. <laughs> so was that the first really time you've been to Shores when that when you went? With the sickness? No, it wasn't the first time. I'd been there a couple of months prior. Um, but on a ride out, that was the first time. Yeah, yeah, awesome. And what was cool is we got there and they arranged a little meeting where we could go and see all the custom bikes and yeah, stuff. So, cool. you know, that, that was cool. That was Two really years cool. later, it's like your second home. It's, it's home, if I'm honest. It's, people think I work there, that they see me there so much. But, you know, I think that's the beauty of it as well. You know, dealers dealers do get an absolute bashing if we're really brutal and, and honest about it. And for me, I've had different experiences. Mm. You know, I've been to somewhere it's not good. Um, but 
the reason why I keep on going there is because I've had you know constant good experiences and they are my friends genuinely yeah, yeah. you know it's it's not somewhere where they lend me bikes and all that stuff it's a genuine relationship friendship that I've got mm-hmm. with the guys I just remember but well before I bought mine my friend showed me a picture of his Sportster 48 and I just remember thinking wow that's really cool and then he showed me the FP3 Vance and Hines and his phone he was explained to me oh you know you can <laughs> tune it and all this and I was like whoa this is really like advanced technology <laughs> and then from there I remember thinking I don't know what I'm looking for because as you guys know I'm hopeless with mechanics and all that stuff so um, he was like right I'll sort you out a deal so he went to Swansea Harley Davidson got me the iron and I remember him saying to me are you sure you want the iron because I know you're going to go for a 48. Yeah, everyone says yeah, that. And then so at the time, I was like, right, I, I just got married, just bought my house. And I was like, and my, <laughs> my wife said to me, look, start small in terms of budget, <laughs> not yeah, yeah. size of bike, and go from there. And um, I had the iron then delivered to me. But I remember within a month or two months, I was kind of looking at the 48. <laughs> And I was thinking, oh, the forward, because I sat like, like all that know, position. Yeah, yeah, love it. And I just love the, you know, the chunky. That front end. It's that front tire mm-hmm. thing, isn't it? Like that. The forks it's, it are faster, yeah. aren't they? Yeah. yeah, it's the, you know, all that stuff. So yeah. that was my um, intro to it. How long did you have the iron for? Not long enough. <laughs> oh, really? um, <laughs> probably, oh gosh, I'm guessing here now. I'd say four months. Oh, really More. short. It was really yeah. short. Um, I must admit, for me, if I could have two bikes. Oh, yeah, I what would you I'd have a Tora. Mm. I'd have the Road King S. <laughs> and, and that is perfect for me. Mm-hmm. And what I love about it is such a raw bike. So you've got the comfort, mm. but it feels like a sportster in terms of there's no fair in, it's just... Naked. Naked, mm. yeah. <laughs> and that's cool. All right, so before we wrap up, I just wanted to ask you a little bit about what your future plans are for your channel. Yeah, so I think at the moment with my channel it's quite reactive, being really honest. But one of the things that I do want to do more of um, is more touring. So that's something that I really, really love. Um, And from doing Snowdonia, that was super sick. So Mm. I'm going to do more trips like that and bring Mm. that into my channel. Things like the reviews and the sports sickness and uh, doing more custom work on Fat G, which is going to happen. That will always come. Custom work, wow. Yeah, yeah. What's left, (laughs) on (laughs) it? A few things to do, but um, yeah. So that's going to be the future of my channel and and the content then. So whatever I do, it'll be cool. So I like to have a little one-to-one with oh, people. If you think this is deep, right? You wait. <laughs> <laughs> and then Matthew yeah. likes to do the bike profiling. So I guess you guys will just have a bit of a chat yeah, about a bit of a chat about your bike. Yeah. Cool. Unfortunately, we haven't got it because of the weather, but we can just put some beaver on. Them. Yeah, I've got. We can make it look like it was here. It's like at Shaw's. <laughs> <laughs> dress you up we'll kick you out a little bit yeah this is my square <laughs> yeah that's it this cool. bit right. peace out <laughs> peace okay this part I like to have a little one to one with people okay because Matt and I uh, <laughs> I was going to say we're mental <laughs> Uh, we're quite open about our mental health and Matt and I had a massive mammoth kind of the first time we probably met we probably stayed in Starbucks for about five hours (laughs) wow Um, just talking and we were really honest straight out of the gate about mental health stuff which Mm. I think probably was what bonded us really quickly and very quickly we were talking about the bikes and how they make us feel and our well-being and all that I mean all the good stuff Um, your experiences now? My experience of mental health in terms of I mean anything, anything but I think especially because you're, you're new to riding too and I know for me this was the yeah. biggest time that I found something that actually has done wonders. Yeah, no, I completely agree. I think for me, you know, really thinking about times where I've been very relaxed, mm. you know, had the endorphins <laughs> flying about, all that type of stuff, many occasions. <laughs> but um, We're just talking I about think, bikes. Yeah, we're talking about bikes here. <laughs> so I think, you know, for me I work in a real high-pressured What's your job? Role. So I'm a national sales manager okay. in a company. Yeah, obviously <laughs> a company. So I'm not making this stuff up. But, um, in fact, it doesn't exist. I work in national not really here. sales. <laughs> <laughs> but, so it's, 
you know, and I, I don't say that I ever, ever feel stressed or anything like that, but there's always points where my brain is constantly firing. It's mm-hmm. constantly you know, juggling figures, people management, blah, blah, blah. And I think for me, where I've really felt relaxed and just felt like my brain has gone, just stop mm-hmm. thinking and actually just feeling calm yeah. and then oh I feel great yeah that's when yeah that kind of comes first isn't it the, yeah yeah the it's, feeling it's it kind calm. of drop <sighs> completely your brain just shuts off and it stops thinking about a hundred different things mm. and you're right on the bike that's when you get that mm. and I think for me I always try and get especially to, during summer periods when I get home from work Go 20 minutes yeah and even, it usually takes 20, 20 minutes yeah, that's, yeah just to chill out then yeah to really settle in and yeah in. Yeah, yeah Deb but I think you know for mental health you know there's so many things that you can do to create that mood that mm-hmm. you know that chilled feel and for me it just comes in different shapes and forms you mm-hmm. can go into the gym you know looking after yourself in terms of what you eat you know and then I add in the bike the sportster <laughs> for me it's just a different dynamic yeah a whole so, other level yeah yeah, yeah. Completely. So you had other ways prior to the bike that you kind of yeah, could, had, but this is it, exactly. And I think different. it's just about finding balance. Your thing as well, I guess. Yeah, and finding balance in your life. And oh, yeah, I sure. think we all put so much pressure on ourselves. Mm-hmm. And I think social media is to blame for that mm-hmm. as well. I mean, I just think about you know my YouTube. I'm always thinking, oh, I want to post as much as the boys like Maxwell and Blockhead and Bike and Bird and Dan Dan. Mm-hmm. And you know, I just physically can't. Yeah and you you just can't try and compare Compare. yourself Mm -hmm. you've just got to do you and do what you feel happy with and if you get to that point that's a good place to be in life um (laughs) why is a tennis ball fuzzy why is it that's a really good question why is it fuzzy the reason why it's fuzzy (laughs) is because on grass the ball requires the fuzz, otherwise it doesn't bounce a certain way. <laughs> Is that true? No, it's absolutely No, oh, it's totally sold. But I just love really? getting sucked into it, yeah. Wow. I can do this quite a lot. You're a salesperson. <laughs> <laughs> I can't need that ball. <laughs> um, is there something that you're freakishly bad at? Freakishly bad at, yeah. Maintenance of a Harley Davidson. <laughs> I quite like that you just. Yeah, up front. I'm just I can't shit. Do that shit. I'm shit. And <laughs> I, I, I think when I, I did my um, build series on Fat G, I did a bit where I actually sat in front of the camera and said, "Guys, you know, just to let you know, I'm not doing this. I'm rubbish. And actually, I don't want to do it because I don't like it. It's not my thing. And yeah. I just want to ride. Yeah. Because at the start of my journey, I got so much shit about that about oh you don't maintain your motorbike yourself and oh my god you take it to a Harley dealership and all this <laughs> I just don't get it yeah. I really don't get it there's things at life that you're great at and things at life that you're not good at and unless there's a zombie apocalypse I'm going to be you absolutely to, fine no. <laughs> yeah exactly yeah so. I quite like that though because a lot of people do especially Harleys everyone sort of tinkers on their own Harleys or customs them in some way shape or form so I quite like that you're just like I don't do I just it. don't do it I'm like, it's not me yeah <laughs> it's just not what I'm good at I never had a Lego set when I was a kid oh Meccano so, no if you could write a note to your younger self what would it say oh so that's such a good yeah, one that's a good one isn't it that's such a good one I tell you what if I turn that question around a bit best bit of advice I ever had for my mum was if you're not happy about something change it simple and I think that's been always a key thing for me so I remember growing up this is going really deep now so you get this some stuff yeah so I remember if you can can you squeeze out a tear I, yeah, yeah. Just, 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 yeah. just start bawling on the floor and scream. <laughs> no, don't do that. Don't, don't scare people. Far. Just a little solitary one that just trickles down your cheek as you talk. Yeah, give me a close up. That's <laughs> fine. But by, I remember I went, I went on a rugby tour. I dislocated my knee. Blah blah blah. And then I was in plaster for six weeks. Mm. And during that period, I was a little bit down. The downtime, a lot the of downtime from injury. Is rubbish. We get a kind of theme of that actually. People talking. Yeah, about and I think from that I started eating loads and I put on a lot of weight. Mm. And I just remember having the plaster taken off and I was just like, oh, I just feel like rubbish, yeah. look rubbish, da, da, da. and I remember having a chat with my mum and I was like, oh, do you know what, I, I want to look like a certain way. And she's like, well, do something about it, you know, make a change. And I just remember I did a, a, a physique transformation. So I've done a lot of that stuff in my past. 
where I went from uh, I think it was sixteen percent body fat down to seven percent. Whoa! And I've done that a couple of times, and that for me just that proved to me basically that if you really focus on something that you really want, mm. you can you can make a change can. to a degree. So that's been a key theme. So I think going back to your question, what I'd write to myself is, you know, if you want to make something happen, you've got to do that. Mm. And, and to think, believe that it's in you to be able yeah, to. Yeah. Because it's hard to think that way, isn't it, when you're feeling really low? Yeah. And I think, you know, when you're younger as well, and I think there's that tipping point where you start to realise, oh, if, if I want to do that, I need mm. money. Mm. And I think that's a realisation for a lot of kids growing up. Because, you know, I was spoiled. I'll be honest with you. I was mm. the only boy out of six girls, you know, six sisters. Six girls, and, uh, wow. So that was, you know, I was a spoiled young lad, <laughs> you know, quite rightly yeah, so. Boy. And there was that point where, you know, I didn't get all the things that I used to have. And to get it, I needed to work. work for it. Yeah. Mm. And, and that was a real um, point in my life where I thought, right, I've got to... Mm. Make a change. And even moving from Swansea, where I lived, over to England, yeah. that was because of my Probably career. Location. You know, that was, again, another point where I'd say I was stuck in a job. I wanted to earn more. I wanted to be more. So I had to move. Mm. And it was as simple you as that. to make that decision. Yeah, yeah, and I just did it. I yeah. literally just did it. <laughs> but it was cool. Mr. Mark Bennett, <laughs> we are finished with you. Thank you. You may leave the shop. Okay. But can you, before you go, <laughs> can you give us an infamous Moto Noob outro, please? Yeah. Go. So, all the best, guys. See you on the next vlog. Moto Noob Rider. <laughs>